Okay, so that's some background information about lights um, that we can utilize to better understand why we're going to do what we do um, in this particular activity. So we'll utilize the Zooniverse platform again for this activity, just like we did in um, some of our other activities. So again, you'll want to make sure you're signed into the Zooniverse um, and then visit this project page link. So that will take you to a page that I'll show you here in just a second. And you'll want to make sure you see in this green box that says you're classifying as a student of your classroom at the top of the screen. If you don't see that, um, log out, log back in, try the project link a second time, um, and make sure. If you do not see that, then your answers will not be recorded. So what we're going to go through and do um, in this particular activity is we're going to look at a series, uh, a selection of galaxy spectra. You can actually do as many of these as you want, but you need to do at least 10 of them. And we're looking for a very um, particular set of absorption lines known as the calcium doublet, and I've shown them in this um, figure right here. So a doublet is what happens when you have two lines right next to each other that are in some way connected. So in this particular instance, these two absorption lines are due to the element calcium. So just like the calcium that's in your milk and your bones and things like that. Um, so when out in space, calcium absorbs at um, two very close particular wavelengths to each other. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try and look for these two lines um, in each of the galaxy spectra that you happen to take a look at. And in particular, we're going to be measuring what's called the K line. So there's two of them, and for reasons we won't get into, we label each of these lines based on a letter. So we are f specifically focusing on the one that's going to be on the left, which we call the K line. So that's the one that you're going to be looking for. Um, so if you click on over, you should be able to see something that looks like this. And again, you want to make sure you have that box up at the top that says you're classifying as a student in your classroom. Um, and so you can see that I've got a spectrum up right now. So first, I would recommend clicking the need some help with this task. It'll give you a little bit more background information into why we're doing this. Um, here is a slightly cleaner, less noisy spectrum than the example that I've got shown. But you can see those are the two lines. And again, we're focusing on this one, which is the K line. Um, and because of how fast the object is moving, this line may show up at different wavelengths to, uh, for each different galaxy spectrum. So you're not always going to expect them to be in the same location. They can be shifted. Um, and that's because of that Doppler shift, because of how fast the object happens to be moving, the galaxy that we're looking at. So what we're going to do is we're going to create this little green box, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, around that leftmost um, K line of the calcium doublet. And you need to do this for at least 10 galaxies. Um, so I'll be able to tell that you've done at least 10. You can do more if you want to, um, and that will be utilized in some future project. Um, one thing to note is that um, this may not always be easy to do. So this very first spectrum that I showed up here, this one is very clear and easy to tell where that calcium doublet is. And you can see there's other absorption lines for other things throughout here, but we're looking explicitly for this um, this pattern of two together, this pair. Um, this particular spectrum has what we call good signal to noise, um, which, which basically means just like uh, when you're listening to over the air radio, um, if you get too far away from the radio tower, the sound may get a little noisy and it gets harder to hear. The same thing can happen with light. Depending on how bright the object is or how far away from us it is, um, the light signal can get a little noisy. Um, as well. So this is a clear one, but this is an example of one that's very noisy. So all of these um, very sharp dips are likely not actually absorption lines. They're likely just noise. So it can be difficult to find that doublet in some cases, but just do the best that you can. Um, and again, that's why we're focusing on the doublet. So it's an obvious pattern to look for. Um, and we'll, we'll utilize the results, the class's results from this to, to do part two. So your job right now is to just be as um, careful in this process, in this measurement process, as you can. And one of the ways that you can um, make it a little bit more easier is that there are some controls that you can use to zoom in or, or pan around and even reset if you find yourself stuck in an odd place. 
um, so that you can do um, the most careful and precise measurements as possible. Um, when you're doing these measurements, you want to try and make sure that your box is as wide as the entire line, so going all the way back up, and then that you want to make sure that, that that lowest dip is in the center of your green box. So if you try and go through and do that um, for each one of these and be as precise as you can, then you're doing a great job. If you don't like the box that you've made, you can grab these little green um, dots here and resize it. And if you really mess things up, you can just hit the X and start over. So I'll go through and show you an example um, with this one that I'm doing right now. So we want to click the, uh, the blue box here. And then when I come back over, I should be able to drag things around. And sometimes they move around on you a little bit. So again, I want to try and collect um, the entire line here. So I'm going to move this other one over to the other side. And this green box has a, has a minimum smallest size. So sometimes you actually have to go a little bit over because the box only wants to be so big. So this is about the best I can do on this one. So just to go through and double check, I've got my point roughly in the middle of my green box, so my lowest dip here. Um, and then I'm making sure that I'm including the full line. And I could zoom in on this if I want to see it a little bit more to make sure that I'm doing a good job. Um, but because it won't let me go any smaller, that's about the best that I can do. So then I go through and click Done, and I get another spectrum. So you just keep repeating until you've gone through and done 10 of these. There's nothing for you to record or submit for this lab. I will just be able to go through and look at the Zooniverse platform to see that you've done all 10 or more um, in there. Um, so there's no particular submission or anything like that. That's why you don't see a submit button on the, the main Canvas page up at the top. So as long as you go through and classify at least 10 of the spectra, then you're good and done. And again, I will verify that you've classified those 10. I do that generally on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and over the weekend. So um, it may just take a little bit of time for it to show up in your grades that you've gone through and done this. Good luck and have fun.